Hello, it's been a long day and we are nearing the end of the time frame of the session. So I'm uh, trying to start with a very quick overview of the developments of the Eastern Baltic just before the 13th century and uh, more focusing on the urbanism in Tartu during the 13th century. So just a reminder that we are moving northward into a territory which during a medieval period was divided between several powers and Tartu, which I am focusing here upon, is situated uh, in the inland region, so not as a coastal town. So this is what I'm trying to summarize in the remaining 14 minutes and to give a prelude uh, what happened before. Uh, regarding uh, the ideas about urbanism in the Eastern Baltic, it is, uh, to cut a long uh, story rather short, uh, uh, the traditional approach in Estonian historiography has been that urban development began with the uh, Baltic Crusade in the early 13th century. However, uh, there have been other opinions, especially if they were focused upon during the last uh, 15 years, which stress that there has been a local earlier development with uh, several uh, types of sites which have been proposed as pre-urban. On the map on the left-hand side, you can see the uh, network of final Iron-Range hill forts in the Estonian area, and you can see there are six dots which uh, uh, are at the same site as uh, several urban centers of Estonia during the later medieval period. On the right-hand side, there's a quite different picture of sites which have been suggested as pre-urban, which do not necessarily coincide with the hill forts. So there have been coastal sites which have been included as well as some of the dots which uh, uh, do not have any Hillfort connotation. There's not too much uh, ways to discuss uh, what's behind them, but basically it's uh, been questions of trade and also those of the uh, uh, so-called Eastern <coughs> model of town development or in the German language the Burgstadt model, that means a feudal site which has later housed a church from which a uh, first town has developed. Here's a picture which happened during the medieval period. You can see that there were nine real medieval towns in Estonia, plus a few other sites which uh, uh, had a town-like settlement next to it and a few castle sites. Uh, to stress uh, the very beginnings of this pre-urban process, uh, there has been a fort and settlement system which basically meant a uh, larger settlement site on the just uh, foothill of a hill fort, and one of those sites was also in Tartu, marked here with red, with uh, several objects indicating trade, most notably a coin of late 10th century Arabic coins. Uh, to go on, uh, here's one uh, example of a stratification with several deposits. Uh, most remarkably connected to the 11th century development where there was a historical event in Tartu with <coughs> later medieval layers shown here. So here's the spatial development of the same periods stressing here now is that the 8th to 10th century uh, settlement areas were significantly enlarged during a period uh, when that town area was subjugated to the powers of Rus, which means more than two times uh, growth on territory and also on the depth of uh, layers connected to that in less than 25 years of age. So to come to my own main research questions, I have been interested in what happened actually in Tartu <coughs> during the 13th century. Uh, the general picture which I already referred to was that the gradual development uh, of the uh, pre-urban centers took a quick turn after the conquest, which meant that the new urban development was definitely uh, top-down, led by German, uh, uh, not only merchants, but also newly founded states, and uh, was rather quick. Here's the timeline from a historical sources to Tartu, from the license given to a bishop to build a town up to uh, saying that a wall town had uh, been founded in uh, the next 30 years. And the traditional understanding of this written uh, information has been that it had already been a war town. 
Uh, what I've been doing uh, during the last few years is trying to map the archaeological finds from the town area. Here the red dots on the map are the main excavated areas which have yielded any information about 13th century Tartu. Uh, and the picture, what we is emerging is uh, something which uh, rather looks like that the 13th century settlement has been rather uh, disproportionate. Uh, here are some of the most uh, easily uh, characteristic uh, types of pottery which could be distinguished among most of the archaeological collections that we have. And what is important here is that uh, here are some of the vessel types which allow choices to be understood. For example, those here marked with black dots on the map are those of local making, while those with a green dot are the puffrat were of German uh, uh, origin, both used as cooking ware during the 13th century. Another example to be given here are those marked with the yellow dot have the face jugs of North Scandinavian <coughs> origin, also concentrating around the later marketplace uh, situated on the southern side of a town. So to make a quick conclusion out of the distribution of ceramic finds in the town area, we could see that there's a great concentration next to the area where the marketplace has later been uh, located. This uh, idea, however, is also later uh, justified with uh, analysis of certainly 13th century house types, uh, uh, those timber framed houses which also tend to concentrate definitely in this area. What, of however, what, sorry, what, however, of his interest is the area just south of the town wall, uh, a larger uh, area which also has most of uh, the item types of that period present. So, uh, to move on to a question uh, about the town wall of Tarsio. Uh, as uh, with uh, medieval uh, walled towns, as usual, we should first uh, pay attention to the situation where Tartu is. It is a region where uh, natural stone is on short supply, which means that most of the medieval buildings are brick-made, which also means that there's uh, not a great chance to start town building uh, from the town wall. Uh, archaeological research done during last years and published already uh, several years ago has shown that on two uh, locations where uh, the town wall could be dated strategically, it had emerged no earlier than the very end of the 13th century, which means that the stone wall most likely was not built before, but at least not in the southeastern corner and on the river side of the town. There have been suggestions that a wooden palisade uh, was uh, present before that, but there so far have been no indications of that kind of uh, construction. So we do not have any information what actually the townscape looked like before that. Of course, uh, this uh, suggestion has moved on to the interpretation of the town shape in general, which means that uh, the location of marketplace plus the missing of a southern town wall has given forth to the idea that uh, the town area has uh, extended further south and being replanned during the 14th century. Uh, Another question which has been asked uh, during that and which to my mind can be connected with uh, uh, interpretation of top-down and bottom-up ideas in the town formation of Tartu is the location of churches. As uh, the 13th century town in Tartu was definitely uh, the forming center of a bishopric, uh, it certainly should have been planned as a cathedral site uh, and the forming urban community definitely needed a church. So, so far, there's only one indication when we have a definitely uh, 13th century church made of wood, which precedes the later, probably best known St. John Church of Tartu, known for its terracotta sculptures, but not built before the 1330s. Uh, the cathedral, uh, one of the largest brick uh, structures in the Eastern Baltic, uh, may have been formed in the second half of the 13th century but no traces of uh, any brick structure before the 1260s. Uh, there has probably been an Orthodox church in the very northwest corner of that 
uh, dedicated to St. George and uh, may have also been built in the 13th century. And of course, looking at the town plan, there's one dot which is missing, but the centrally located St. Mary's, where we might in all likelihood think of a connection or marketplace, uh, town center and a church, but so far no positive information of any earlier churches. Another issue is a question of bridges in the town area. Uh, here's the town plan with two uh, medieval dated brick sites, and here you can see how it looks on a geographical model. Uh, the northern one uh, has been located with a river crossing site since the prehistoric times, and this probably was the reason why this site was at all chosen first for a hill fort located here on that site and later for the medieval town. For the southern one, uh, there is written uh, documentation from the 16th century and it was later uh, connected with a bastion building of the 17th century, quite well readable from this uh, geographic situation. So uh, the location of uh, the town, the two bridges, and uh, of course the uh, quite small size of the town uh, leads to the question whether the two were really simultaneous or was there uh, any other reasons for that, and recently there has been actually a suggestion that there not have always been in simultaneous use, so it actually may have been that this, and then the other, and then again the third one. So actually the question of a town plan analysis here does not help. We do need any brick remains. So what was I was trying to discuss here is uh, the role of uh, model-based suggestions in the discussion of town formation in Tartu, does it enhance our viewpoints on the research questions which we have been addressing, or are we are they restricted by the models uh, that we know that should have been there, we should look for an early church, we should have a town wall, and we should have a 13th century cultural layer. Of course, there's a question how to proportionally find a solution balancing uh, those top-down processes which are needed for any urban development with obtained archaeological data. And uh, uh, my suggestion so far has been trying to collect whatever there is so that uh, we have to accommodate this and that uh, to come up with uh, a most reasonable solution to the existing facts. So, so far the research has mostly focused on the spatial development of a town area, where there's probably been most archaeological information used. There has been uh, model-based suggestions which have been uh, used to form new research questions, and there have been data-based considerations such as uh, the short uh, lifespan of a prehistoric settlement based on the long formation project of a 13th century town which do not very well fit into a material remains, but anyhow. And finally, there have been several episodes that led uh, to a way that uh, the town of Tartu has taken in present space. So basically speaking, it has taken something with it from the long history. So thank you for that.